So welcome to pre-algebra. Um, to do this class, you need this book, because I'm going to be tell referring to what's in different pages. It's McDougall Littell Pre-Algebra. If you're taking this class, except yours will not say Teacher's Edition. Yours will be the Student Edition. You can check them out for me, or um, but it, this is the one that is looks like that, and the main author is Ron Larson. So that's that's. Uh, if you're getting your own book, that's what you're looking for. If you're checking one out for me, it'll be the right one. All right, so um, look in your book, open it up, turn to page five. If you haven't gotten your book yet, you need to get it before you watch this because I'll be telling you where to look on certain pages. All right, so pre-algebra. What we're going to do is we're going to learn the skills you need to have success in Algebra 1. Algebra 1 is the most failed class in high school. I, th I call it the dream killer because people have a dream that they want to be a doctor when they grow up or a lawyer or something like that and they take Algebra 1 over and over and fail repeatedly and then they'll drop out of high school. So we're not going to let Algebra 1 kill your dreams. You need to learn it. It's important because you have to have it to get that high school diploma, which you have to have to get that college diploma. So, um, but if you have the really good pre-algebra skills, studies have shown you're going to do much better in Algebra 1. And I teach pre-algebra at a little bit of an advanced level because y'all can handle it. I know you can. And, and so I'm going to actually teach you a little bit of Algebra 1. So that way when you see it next year when you're taking Algebra 1, you'll already know some of the main ideas. Now another thing about it is um, we're going to stress the main things. This is summer school. We're not going to go into every little detail or, you know, for people who are taking this with me this summer. Um, so we're really going to stress the main things, the ones that you need to hang on to. So. Another thing about pre-algebra is some people will go to private school or public school or co-op after pre-algebra where they have to pass a test, a placement test. So some of the things we're going to be learning will be geared toward if you have to take a placement test that you will be successful at it. And students of mine in the past have done great on it, so I know you will too if you have to take a placement test for next year to show that you're ready for Algebra 1. All right, so open your book, turn to page five, and the first thing we're going to talk about are expressions and variables. Now, when you were in elementary school learning to read, or then this was the letter X, but when you were in math class and you had 3X4, that meant 3 times 4, and that you would write equals 12. Now that we're doing algebra, times is no longer an x. An x is going to mean something else. It's going to be an unknown. It's going to be a number that we have to figure out what it is. So, how are we going to signify times if we can't use an x anymore? Well, what we're going to use a dot. That's going to mean times. Or we're going to use print so we can have 3.4 means 3 times 4, or we can do parentheses. So if we have 3 parentheses 4, that also means, I put 14, 12, because so I was saying 4. If I say 4, I have to write 4. Um, 3 times 4 is 12, so we can use parentheses also to mean times. And if you look at your calculator, I want you to have a calculator for this class, a good scientific calculator. If you want the best, get the TI-84, but these things cost about a hundred bucks. Um, but you're going to have to have one next year for Algebra 1, so you might as well go ahead and get it. But if not, you can get like the TI-30 is fine also. But um, it even has parentheses on here, and you can put it just like this in your calculator. Three beginning parentheses, four end parentheses, and it will tell you the answer 12. Now, if you're watching along, this will be a good time to hit pause and try it on your calculator and find those buttons. I'm going to keep teaching, but you hit pause whenever you want need to stop and do something. Okay, another way that, to signify multiplying in pre-algebra is if you have 
a number sitting next to a letter, it means multiply. This is 3 times y. And then if we found out that y equals 4, then we would also know that that would be 3 times 4, which is 12. All right? So these are with letters that stand for something we don't know are called variables because they vary what they are. Um, let's see what else. Okay, these are numerical expressions that I'm writing up here. Um, and to, okay, and what makes math hard is not the math. I know that's shocking to you, but it's true. What makes math hard is the English, it's the words. Because you read the words and you don't know what they want you to do. So part of what we're going to have to learn this year are the, what the words mean so that we can know what to do, what they're asking us to do. So one of the things they're going to tell us to do is evaluate. Evaluate means do the math. If they say evaluate this expression, 3.4, then you're supposed to write 12. It means do the math. That's math code for do the math. Evaluate it. All right. Let's try another kind of problem. Now, we are going to learn how to solve for x in this, this class, but not yet. We have to build up to that. So before they teach you how to solve for x, they always give you problems like example 1 on page 5. It says, evaluate the expression 4 times d when d equals 120. To find how many tons of food a blue whale can eat in a feeding season of 120 days. We don't care anything about the whale, the feeding, nothing. We just care about these numbers. When you have a problem like this, um, you, I want you to list any pro things they give you, what I call knowns over here. Then I want you to write the problem over here. And then what you're going to do is you're going to substitute in for this letter that number. But before we do that, we have to sing a song. It goes like this. Substitute. The songs are going to help you, remind you what to do next. So I want you to sing the songs. I want you to do the dances. Yes, there's dances. I want you to do the hand claps. Everything I've got that I'm going to show you is going to help put it into your memory. Okay? So I'm going to substitute. And I know I can't sing. It adds to the comedic effect. It's all right. I have no pride about that. You can tell. No pride. All right, so 4 times d, I'm going to use parentheses for the times and parentheses, and you can put that in your calculator just like that, and it equals 480. So 480 is how many tons of food a blue whale eats in 120 days. We have our own species of whale in Georgia called the right whale. It has babies off the coast of Georgia. <coughs> Sorry about that. Nathan's saying we're about to run out of time. Keep teaching. All right. So let's do another one. Evaluate the expression. Let's see. Uh, this is example number two. If x equals 10 and y equals 4, those are my knowns, and my expression is x plus y equals. So I sing substitute. And right underneath x, I write 10. And right underneath y, I write 4. And the answer is 14. You have to put a box around your final answer. And I want you to show your work. If you don't show your work on a test, I don't give you credit for it. So you have to show your work. No more math in your head. Because we're heading to Algebra 2, where one problem can take a whole piece of paper with little bitty lines on it, not baby paper. So, you've got to learn to write your work. You can't do it in your head anymore. Okay, example three. You plan to divide 120 players, that's the number of players, in a baseball league into teams with the same number of players. Use a verbal model to write a variable expression for the number of teams, if you know the number of players in each team. So, we've got 120 players, and uh, we need to make an expression to show. So I'm going to say 120 divided by t, t equals the team, will give, will show how many players are on each team. Okay, 
So I made up the expression. Now you might notice that mine's a little different than the book. If they tell you to make up the expression, there's a lot of ways to be wrong, but often there are more than one way to be right. So that's kind of fun. All right, so that's it for this lesson. Math is fun.